In this video, we're going to consider what happens when we have a simultaneous equilibria. That is when we um, mix or when we have in solution uh, two different equilibria that both contribute to the pH in acid base. For example, here is water and water, let me just get the ink color here. Here water dissociates uh, H plus no H minus. Suppose that you had a weak acid that acted like water in terms of its dissociation. This would dissociate into H plus and A minus. These are two equilibria, but they share this common H plus. So therefore the equilibria are coupled and the simultaneous, uh, you need simultaneous equilibria. Consider simultaneous equilibria. Now what we've done in the past is say, well, uh, for example, this would dominate the H plus concentration. The Ka for this is much larger than the Ka for this, this being 10 to the minus 14th. So therefore we don't have to consider the uh, contribution of H plus from this equilibrium, the autoionization of water. Now what we're going to do is to say, okay, maybe we should consider that to be more general. Suppose that both these equilibria, both uh, contributed appreciably to the H plus concentration. All right, so what you when you have this set of coupled uh, coupled equations here, uh, what you have to do is to figure out what are your variables, and then write down four independent equations that relate those variables. If you have four, um, for example, here we have four uh, independent variables. One is H plus, that's going to vary. OH minus is going to vary. A minus is going to vary and HA is going to vary. Now H2O doesn't vary. We said that pure liquids don't appear in equilibrium expressions. So we have one, two, three, four different variables. And what we need to write down for this is four set, a set of four independent uh, equations that relate these variables and then solve that system. Well, over here is uh, the set of equations uh, for a set of four equations independent that uh, describe this equilibrium. The first one, all right, KW, yes, uh, that's uh, just the uh, um, the equilibrium expression for this first reaction. KA, that's the equilibrium ex equilibrium expression for the second reaction. Now that gives you two equations, but we have four unknowns. We need two additional equations. You can always write down in chemical reactions a conservation condition. This means the total concentration um, that of the second equilibrium here has to be a constant. Let's call that constant CT, so total, total concentration. Well, that means if you take some amount of HA and put it to A minus, the amount that HA decreased is equal to the amount of A minus increased. That's what that is. And then finally, if you have charged um, e equations that uh, deal with charges, you have to have a conservation of charge. So this means is that the uh, amount of H plus has, equal to, has to equal the amount of OH minus plus A minus. In other words, there has to be general uh, equal, uh, neutrality, electroneutrality chemical reaction can't uh, violate a macroscopic uh, electroneutrality. If you could, then you could solve the energy crisis. So in principle now we've solved um, our equation. We have these uh, four equations and four unknowns. All right, let's go ahead and try to solve those um, explicitly and I'll show you how that's done. Let's write down that first equation and let's change, um, just make things so we not to write KW all the time. Uh, let's, let's say X correspond to uh, the H plus concentration, Y correspond to the OH concentration. Let's make, um, well, let's see what I do here in my notes, pull up my notes here. Uh, let's Z correspond to the, um, yeah, HA concentration. And let's W correspond to the A minus concentration. Let A correspond to KW. Let B correspond to um, KA. And let C correspond to the total concentration of the weak acid, that second weak acid. All right, so if we make these substitutions here, our four equations can be written as 
A is equal to X times Y. B is equal to X times W divided by Z. C is equal to Z plus W. And uh, X is equal to Y plus W. So they're just written in a more compact way are the four equations that we have to solve. And what we want is the pH, so let's try to solve these set of equations for x. All right, so how to go about doing that? Well, let's, let's do it tediously. Uh, let's solve this equation for y. y is equal to x minus w. And then put that value of y every place up in these other three equations, which y appears. That gives us a is equal to x times x minus w. B is equal to xw divided by z, and c is equal to z plus w. So now we reduce it to three equations and three unknowns. We got rid of the unknown y. Let's use this equation, w is equal to c minus z, and then plug into w, where w piece here appears, right there and right there. We do that. We then reduce it to two equations and two unknowns. A is equal to x, plugging in what uh, uh, w is, uh, the x minus c plus z. Be sure of those signs there. B is equal to x times c minus z divided by z. Two equations, two unknowns, x and z. Recall that a, b, and c are our constants. Well, let's solve this equation for z. Uh, now let's solve this equation for z. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but let's do this. Yeah, okay. So in this case, z is equal to a over x uh, minus x. So when we take that over there, that'll be a minus x plus um, c. Plug that in down here we end up with b is equal to x. That's kind of complicated, but uh, we'll just go ahead. So c minus z, that's what z is. It's uh, a over x. Uh, that's a minus sign minus, so let's be a plus x. Uh, and then a minus c. That's where z is there. We'll put this down here, plug in z, that's uh, a over x minus x plus c. And now we have one equation and one unknown, just x. a, b, and c are known. All right, uh, let's just multiply top and bottom by x. That'll get rid of that. So we have b is equal to x squared, c minus a over x, plus x minus c. Divide this by, uh, well, we multiply by x. That clears that x. So it's just x minus or sorry, a minus x squared uh, plus cx. And, um, you know, multiply, take this over here, multiply it by there, and so on, and collect terms. What you end up with is uh, x cubed. Let me just check my notes here. Yeah, x cubed uh, plus bx squared plus x minus a minus b times c minus b times a equals zero. So this is a third order uh, polynomial. It's a cubic equation. a, b, and c are uh, the parameters and we can solve this for x. Once we get that we can um, then find out what the pH is. Alright, so how are we going to solve this equation? Well. First of all, let's put in some reasonable values. Remember that uh, A, let's go back up here, what we said A was, A is KW, let's say at 25 degrees, we'll say A is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. All right, B is KA, we want the KA to be comparable to KW, so let's make a B, uh, for instance, 1 times 10 to the minus 10th. Now this weak acid is sort of similar to the KW here. And let's say C, remember what C was? C was our initial concentration. Typically what we're using is a 0.1 molar. All right, 
So with those A, B's, and C's here, we can now get a series of numbers. Um, actually, let's just do that. So we have here X cubed. Um, and B, what was B? Let's see. Uh, check my notes here. Plus X squared. B was 1 times 10 to the minus 10th plus x. Uh, this is minus a, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, minus b, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 10th, times 0.1, minus b times a, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, times 1 times 10 to the minus 10th, that's equal to zero. And now we have to solve this for x. Well, um, let's, uh, I'll show you this cool thing. Wolfram Alpha, let me move this over here. Wolf, Wolfram Alpha, it's really cool. Uh, WolframAlpha.com, and maybe you've seen this before or maybe not. What do you want to calculate or know about? Well, let's see, what we want to do is to solve this equation, okay. This is the equation. So we have x cubed uh, plus x times 1 times 10 to the minus 10th, 1e minus 10, plus, oh, that was, sorry, x squared. plus x, all right, so what we have here, minus 1 to the minus 14th, uh, minus, uh, let's see, it was 1, e minus 10, times 0.1, okay, and then we have this term here, I do this in my head, 10 to the minus 24th minus 1e minus 24. Okay, Wolfram Alpha, solve this equation. We're going to solve for x. Press return. Chugs along for a minute. And, okay. So there it is. Um, we solve this equation, what we get, x, x, well, hmm, we got a bunch of values of x. As we might expect, it's a cubic equation, so we get three values of x. This one is not reasonable, it's negative. This one's not reasonable, it's negative. Oh, look at this, this is reasonable, it's positive, and so on. So it looks like x, the solution, the reasonable solution to this equation is 3 times 3.16 times 10 to the minus 6. So x is equal to 3.16 times 10 to the minus 6, and pH is then minus log of that, and that is equal to uh, 5.50. There we go. So that's how you do simultaneous equilibria with a little help from Wolfram uh, Alpha. That's kind of cool. I mean, for instance, uh, how about this? You can ask it any question. So, for instance, we're going to ask um, meaning of life. All right, so what do you think it'll give us for meaning of life? Those of you who read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer to meaning of life is... Okay. Ah, all these ads. 42, that's the meaning of life. Well, hope you had fun listening to this. Um, see you next time.